So this poem is called um, the Abramovic Method. I hope I'm saying that right. It's about um, an artwork that Marina Abramovic, Abramovic did um, with the two people, her and Yuri, with their hair plated together. So this is that, the Abramovic Method. One set of keys between us, like two people handcuffed together, or their hair plated into a single plate, each balancing from that point in the shape of a fan. Alternate jailers, flying, really living when still, taking off to play with loose forms to return with new words. Perhaps this is a trial, like a workplace team building exercise. Life breaks up like kindling in chaos to fall again as familiar ash, elementary dust. The first night before we had sex, I tried to chase the huge yellow moon over the hill, not knowing what it was, thinking of something like the stadium lights of a basketball court. But there were only fields that were about to give up with the change of seasons, us perched on its edge, moths around fire. With disregard for the past, I leaned in to feel a soft, exposed back with my mouth to this place. Thank you. Um, I'm sure a lot of you will know what I'm talking about when I say that you write poems and then every one in ten or one in twenty you'll think, you know, that was really it, that's why I write poems. And that's how I felt about this one, but um, as I'm sure you also know, it's hard to live between those one in tens and one in twenties. So that's how we live. Anyway, this poem's called Letters to the Editor. I always have time to write these. Editor, Mr, Sir... I think I love you. In this spirit, I lick envelopes. It's too easy to maintain composure in the delayed form of writing, but you can't imagine my inordinate suffering. Also, to note, I'm afraid I've taken offense to the emotive barbs in a song I couldn't protect against, a deserted cafe, sudden clammy chills. The days stretch and multiply. No thought is spared for the good consumer, Fastidiousness as a quality is undervalued. It's this appalling slide that keeps me awake, this falling through the atoms. I need to gather up everything that's ever been dropped. Pass me to the correct department for the survival threshold. How they clap the first time you stand during <coughs> infancy, but look away each time for the rest of your life. There are too many artists, but not enough audience. The forest is firm and deep, but I don't have enough rope. To take action against things as they appear, we must sign here, and there, and here, and there. Thank you. Um, this last one I wrote um, for an event that Roundabouts did about women in war, so I'm really grateful for that event, because otherwise I would have never written this poem. Um, this poem is called Survivors. There is no poetry in a life that was born without love, and suffered till it died like an animal. I try to feel as lucky as my family tell me I am for not being war-torn rather than guilty. How can we be grateful for things not experienced but still haunt? These images of brown people turned ghosts by ash and fallout, the sight of their blood the only sign they're alive, is a cultural whip to keep us on our toes, their mouths silent, two familiar O's. Amongst the mundanity of life with its bashful, everyday sufferings, space must be made in the consciousness for every worthless existence and potential Einstein that was run over by an ice cream man or had a heart attack masturbating. Scrolling through the news shows me government brutality in my own country, someone's cranium unable to contain its blood. Then a Cosmopolitan article, 12 things about missionary that men love. A reporter recently confessed that women are still having sex in places reduced to ground level and dust, unable to grow. So morbid curiosity for the rest follows, periods, childbirth, menopause. Perhaps someone near a bomb site is plucking eyebrows or rouging lips like liberated concentration camp victims. In this moment, we are survivors. We don't talk about the dead amongst us or millions of parallel fibers. Thank you.